Then let's continue uh, and let's move from the animals to the environment and its role in antibiotic resistance. So I will reflect on, on three different dimensions here actually or roles of the environment in, in antibiotic resistance. Uh, first I will just mention briefly that what we see in the environment can actually inform us of what's happening in humans or animals. I'll talk about the environment as a transmission route for resistant bacteria, how resistance spreads through the environment, and also about the environment as an arena where resistance evolve and eventually emerge in pathogens. So if we look at the first one, <coughs> the environment actually can tell us quite a lot of how or what we are doing. If we go out and look at chemicals or the condition of the environment, that tells us sometimes about what we're doing. Like in these extremely polluted waters, that probably indicates that there is some polluting industries nearby. Uh, some colleagues of mine, they uh, analyzed narcotic drugs in uh, sewage. Uh, in this case, it was cocaine residues. And they measured that during the days of the weeks in the wastewater from Milano. And the pattern they saw was something like this, indicating that there are parting more in the weekends. So it tells us something about human behavior when you go out in the environment and analyze certain things. And you can actually do similar things for antibiotic resistance. So this is a paper that we just published. And it shows that if you look at the resistance in, in sewage, that actually correlates quite well with the resistance in the hospitals. We've done that in, here in Sweden at hospitals, also in municipal sewage, and we've done it now also in, in different countries uh, across Europe. Uh, and and uh, we see that, yes, there's actually a correlation in what we see in sewage to what we see in the clinic. So it reflects the resistance situation, and that could be quite useful, particularly if you go to parts of the world where we have no idea, basically, how the resistance situation looked like. like in many or even most countries in Africa. So we have a project right now in Africa where we are collecting sewage bacteria to try to predict what is actually the resistance situation among people. There. So that's just a few words about uh, the environment as a reflection of the human situation. Then let's turn to the role of the environment <coughs> Uh, with regards to transmission of antibiotic resistant bacteria. So, contaminated water can be a route for spreading bacterial pathogens, um, particularly when fecal material, feces, comes in contact with water. Uh, that's a great risk. Now, in the Western world, here for example, we have pretty um, good infrastructure for taking care of our waste. So there's limited flow of enteric bacteria to the environment. Still, there are occasions where we have problems with bathing water, etc., <clears throat> where you hear that there's too many E. coli in the water now and you should not go out swimming because there's risk for, for getting infections, right? That happens even here. But in many parts of the world, there is basically no infrastructure for taking care of your sewage. And when there's, that's com combined with poverty, then there's a, a real great risk actually for spreading infectious diseases through contaminated water. And actually it's not only the, the spread of resistant bacteria that spawns this, but recognize that basically any kind of infectious disease 
will trigger use of antibiotics, particularly in a low resource setting, because that's quite common reaction. You, you get sick, you take antibiotics, and that drives resistance. Even if it's a viral infection, people tend to take antibiotics. So any transmission of any infectious disease probably spawns antibiotic resistance. You follow? Yep. And this we described in, in this paper, for example. Um, we find more and more resistance out in the environment. These are some analysis of um, archived soil, so old soil samples. I think it's from uh, Dutch soils. Uh, sampled here from 1940s and to uh, the 2000s. And genes to different types of antibiotics seems to be more and more common in these soils. Probably as a, as a result of our use of antibiotics. And if you go out in the environment and, and look for antibiotic resistant bacteria, bacteria with acquired antibiotic resistance, not those that are naturally resistant, but those that have acquired it, you find it basically everywhere. And one reason for this is birds. Because birds, they come in contact with us and our sewers, etc., and then they fly all over the world, and poo. So they basically help spreading bacteria across the globe. There was a recent publication, I think from Svalbard, where the researchers found NDM, for example, which is a resistance gene that was first described in India a few years ago, and now it's becoming a real problem because it makes bacteria resistant to carbapenems, and they find it up there. Probably as a result of bird poo. Because birds catch it and move and poo and it drops down everywhere. So it's really difficult to find pristine environment, environments that really reflects how it was before the antibiotic era. Because the entire world is now coated in antibiotic resistance. To some degree. But all environments don't contain the same. Of course. Um, we did an investigation of, of actually how, how much resistance genes are there in different types of environments. And uh, we did that by, by looking at, in public metagenomes. Metagenome is basically when people have sequenced the DNA of microbial communities. So like soil or water or feces or sediment or something like this. So you can sequence it, you get millions and millions of DNA reads, and you can look if these DNA reads match a resistance gene, right? And you can count them and see how common they are. And you can see how many they are and detect the different types. And if you look at this one here, we uh, looked at, this was over 800 different samples from across the world. It was, see to the, to the left there, there are samples from the human body, skin, airways, etc. And there are some from animals. Then there's some environmental ones. And here, the very highest one we found in air. They had a lot of variety of different resistance genes. The only air samples that was available at this time, they were from smog in Beijing. So we don't know if it looks the same in different parts of the world, but we reported this. And it unfortunately created panic in Beijing because they were afraid of breathing and they would uh, get infected with resistant bacteria. But this doesn't say that. This is not a quantification of how many resistant bacteria they are, different types. Uh, and it doesn't say whether they are alive or dead. And it doesn't say which bacteria they sit in either. So it doesn't necessarily mean that it's dangerous with air. It's really good to have air. But uh, it means that it could be a route where genes are transmitted because they're traveling through air. Also, now, most bacterial infections you don't get through breathing normal air. You get it through other routes like contact or contaminated water, etc. Most of them. Now, transmission, we should be aware of that. That is a global phenomenon. Because nowadays, bacteria transport across the world just as fast as a jumbo jet flies. 
with our intestines. We and others have shown in, in a number of studies that if you visit a country with a high burden of antibiotic resistance, such as in this case India, these are Swedes, Swedish students actually travel, medical students traveling to India, most of them carry multi-resistant bacteria in their gut flora when they come back. Even if they haven't taken any antibiotics or anything, because they've come in contact with an environment that contains lots of antibiotic resistant bacteria. That tells us that it matters a lot for how, to how other countries are managing their resistant problem for how we should handle it tomorrow here, for our situation tomorrow. 